I like towers and all, but blow this for a job. The sun is shining. Where am I? I'm up on top of Mount Wellington, also known as Cunyane, which is the Aboriginal name for this mountain. And the reason that I'm up here today, you can probably see the reflection in my glasses. I'm here to show off some towers. This is a uh, tower which has been up here since, oh, I think, I think 19, late 90s. This is a, a bit of a unique tower. Um, this one was installed up here because of the previous tower which just kept getting damaged all the time by the weather. So just down here towards the south is where all of the wind comes from and all of the ice and the snow. Um, and it just absolutely wrecks havoc with anything up here. I've got a repeater, an amateur repeater on another tower just over which I'll show you shortly. But I'll talk about this one first. This one uh, behind me, yeah, is a concrete, concrete tower at the base and then it's got a ray dome at the top which is, houses all the antennas at the top. But today, you notice they're doing a bit of work up there at the moment. So I'll just add a bit of a quick chat to the guy um, over there who he's been abseiling. He just abseiled down and he said that they're doing some restoration work, um, just checking to make sure that everything's all in order. Um, just a bit of preventative maintenance. Are you just restoring it or? Yeah, I just pumped it. So it just did like an inspection and a repair. Oh, yeah. Some internal work, some void work in that. Yeah. They were painting the whole thing afterwards. What colour? Grey. <laughs> I think it's just a clear cut. <laughs> it's been up there a while. Aye, since November or something, I think it's done. Yeah, oh, I meant the tower. 20 years? Oh, yeah. I was too sure. Yep. Nah, this might work in November. You don't get days like this to do much work. Perfect days. Ah, I know. I know. It's been a bit cloudy recently, so. Yeah. I'll leave you to it. They're just uh, going to repaint the tower eventually too. So they've got all these guy wires all set up on around the base of the tower and uh, they're just uh, going for a bit of an abseil. You can see old mates just right up the top there. Uh, and uh, the t as I said, the top bit, which is the ray dome, um, that houses the all the antennas. So uh, where the top of that ray dome starts is about 67 metres and then to the top is 130 metres all the way to the top. So it's quite a big tower. This mountain is... Uh, looks directly over the city of the Hobart. It's a bit of a unique mountain because there aren't any other mountains this high So what about 4,000 feet straight above a capital city or a city in Australia? So yeah, they chose this site because of obviously because of the height and it covers pretty much of southern Tasmania It covers all around the south and all around the, the city. At the top there. We've got radio um, FM broadcasting. We've got digital DAB um, digital FM, or well, not digital FM, digital radio broadcasting, uh, digital television, high definition television. Uh, so pretty much all the broadcasters broadcast from this tower. There is another tower which does have commercial broadcasters, but uh, yeah, this one, this one is pretty much the main one. And uh, they've also got all of the feeds. They've got some satellite dishes over there too, which take all the feeds off of satellites when uh, they need to if it ends up. Uh, going down over you know bad weather the accommodation over there houses it's got beds and all sorts of things so people can who are you know have to look after this uh, setup to make sure that it runs in the middle of winter can go and stay there for days on end if they really need to yeah the other tower that used to be over here ended up being knocked over actually i think it was more over here but that ended up being knocked over because it had this giant ray dome over the top of it which just um it kept getting iced up the antennas just kept breaking and falling off and uh, we actually had an amateur repeater a two meter repeater up on top of that tower at one point but um, that ended up being removed you can see too quite at, right at the top there is the lightning arresters so they attract all the lightning this tower gets hit heaps of times uh, when there's lightning about and there's an elevator that runs all the way up the middle as well which takes uh, people all the way to pretty much the top but these guys who are working there at the moment um, they probably lowered the power, I reckon, down uh, for the top there. I can't remember exactly offhand how much power that this tower runs. TV, which, uh, from memory, I'm going to say 
20 to 50 I can't that's a big range but I think it's about 50 kilowatts so yeah they have to lower that to make sure that these blokes are safe I've, I've got an article somewhere which details the build of this uh, tower as well which I might uh, include in a screenshot but basically when they built this they put a slip form around here and poured concrete all in and as they did that they progressively went up up in uh, up the levels and they had like a crane up the side of the tower it's quite interesting actually um, it's amazing how far deep they drilled into this rock so if you have a look around here this is like dolerite type rock and it's there's it's not that easy to dig into um, and they've got Rio Rio bar or or what do you call them guys drilled into the ground that go like 10 to 15 meters into the ground so <laughs> it's pretty serious tower this site cops quite a bit of wind pretty much from that direction so that's south and there's pretty much you know that direction to Antarctica and all of the wind associated with it so um, when it hits this it's you know really fair going so it's uh, quite a piece of engineering so quite you quite unique and um, a bit of a, a bit of a popular one amongst broadcast technicians and broadcast operators who know about it so as I mentioned I've got a ham radio repeater up here as well it's on 70 centimeters we used to have uh, the two meter repeater up here but uh, a few years ago managed to negotiate a 70 centimeter repeater that's been up here for probably I don't know eight years or something now and we're just about to convert it over to two meters so let's uh, hop over onto that site and I'll give you a bit of a tour so here is site number two and this tower is a bit more exposed this is a lattice steel lattice tower I think that this one has been uh, here since the late 60s I, I've done a bit of research over the years and I had a look at a YouTube video which shows an old uh, video footage which the tower looks almost exactly the same so I don't think that this tower has been um, changed or um, replaced in that time like the other ones so the other ones over on the other side of the mountain as you can see at the top there the antennas are all exposed as well they're all i think interfaced arrays dipoles you can see you can see off to the right there all the dipoles I've got a better photo which i can uh, show over the top as well but this tower does suffer from ice fall um, it falls on top of the the building you can't you can almost see there so there's along the top here is grating and what happens is, is it's like the grating that you see in like um, when you're walking along the street, uh, you know, the drains, drains grating, that's it. And basically what happens is, is when the ice falls off the tower, the idea is that, that rather than going through the roof of the building, which in this case is concrete, but it smashes the uh, the ice to pieces. So and unfortunately that means that antennas, they do cop it. Antennas like that, there's a folded dipole just uh, underneath there for an FM broadcaster. You can see that they've got one of those mini, well it's like they've built a little mini shield or grating shield so that any ice that falls off the top of this tower gets smashed before it breaks the antenna. It's a really good idea because, as you can see, antennas get damaged. So that there is our antennas. We've got a couple. We've got on top a vertical antenna which is for 70 centimetres. Um, it's not bending over, that's just a parallax error. <laughs> It looks like it is, but it's straight, I'll, I'll assure you. And we've got a folded dipole, which currently has been hit by ice and it's got a bit of mechanical down tilt. The uh, folded dipole is used for APRS on two meters. We use an APRS frequency of 145.175 here. And yeah, the 70 centimeter vertical on top, that antenna is, I think, got a fault with it. Either that or the cable's got a fault because the repeater is down in signal strength coming out of the stick i don't think it's going too well we won't go inside today because i didn't bring the keys with me but um i wonder how uh if there's anyone else who's built repeaters before and had to deal with um getting permission to put them on sites like this because this is a class one or a class a sorry broadcasting site um there's a lot of t time and effort and dedication and insurances and all sorts of things that go into getting access to a site like this and um, it took us, it took probably a good two to three years, I think, to, to get permission here um, with a lot of background work as well happening. So let me know in the comments anyway how you guys have gone. Um, they're not the biggest towers going around here. Um, I, I think they're pretty cool. I'm always a bit of a tower nut. I notice towers and antennas from a mile away and 
I'm always wondering what they're being used for, but they're not the biggest towers in the world, but they are fairly unique and uh, they've been built to suit these conditions down here. I know in the US you've got like, you know, 2,000 foot towers and ridiculous heights because it's nice and flat. Well, we're up here on top of a mountain, so we have to deal with all sorts of weather conditions and stuff. And it's uh, quite an interesting a little venture so so not only do we have a repeater up here but we also set up for field days using our field day van just parked down the road we don't quite park up here because of the interference that happens up on top of the mountain but if you want to check that out then click on this video here and i'll see you over there